Yeah, we're just going to talk a little bit about um, so, uh, Everton's current managerial situation and uh, their poor run of results, basically. Uh, yeah, you know, Everton won, Brighton won. I mean, it's the same old shit. He picks the same players over and over again. The only thing that I will say is he almost picked the back four that I had actually picked in the preview. Um, the only thing is he didn't have he put Holgate in who's a centre back instead of uh, John Joe Kenny because Martinez is fucking shite uh, that's putting it lightly um, yeah he put Jagielka in for Williams which is good because uh, uh, he's finally starting to see some sense that Williams is past it uh, or else he's just out of form he did the same thing to Jagielka last season when he was making mistakes in the early part of the season and then brought him in later on in the season. And it was a kick up the arse that Jackie Elkin needed at the time. But, uh, and then obviously you have Baines there because there's nobody else to replace Baines because he never brought in replacements. With, uh, Michael Keane there, uh, I'm happy enough for him playing alongside Jackie Elkin because, you know, he has the legs to cover in behind. But this whole Ghana and Schneiderlin thing, it isn't working. Um, it worked last season, but it's not working this year. And I don't see why... You would set up with two defensive midfielders against the Brighton side. And I know they have the likes of Pascal Gross and, and Proper as well in uh, midfield. But I still don't see that being... like They should have just Schneiderland sitting in behind, in front of the uh, defence. And then you should have someone in midfield. The likes of, um, say, uh, Tom Davis, who every time he comes on seems to change the game now. Um, he's... He, he's Top quality. There's absolutely no doubt about it. And then, you know, maybe even try Davy Klassen in that centre midfield position instead of the number 10 because you've got about 10 number 10s there all fighting for the same position and then he just puts them all in. He has Sigurdsson on the wing, Rooney, and then he has Calvert-Lewin and he's popping him out wide and he's leaving the ass on the bench. It's just a shambles. So what? What would you think, Paul? Would you say it just has to be a change in attitude, a change in philosophy, or is it basically calming out? Calming out. Calming, cumin. Oh, Coleman. sorry, I think it's calming out. Calming. <laughs> Seamus Coleman in. Um, yeah, Coleman must have. Well, look, you, you look at it like James Coleman. He's obviously a huge loss to the way we play because he's the only fullback in our squad who's not afraid to go on past the halfway line. And when he has played, he's been, you know, he scores a lot of goals because of the positions he gets in. He also creates a lot of havoc and chances for Everton, you know, going forward. True. Yeah, yeah, true. But um, do you think it's time for a change in management? Of course, yeah. I've been saying it for weeks, and and everyone's saying, "Oh, well, you say, oh, you you get back in a couple of weeks." I go, "No, he won't." He looks like he's lost the dressing room. He also looks like he doesn't give a fuck. Win, lose, or draw, he looks the same. He doesn't give a bollocks. Uh, he he's fa- he fall he's fallen out with many of the he players. Looks out, he looks out of his depth to be honest with Paul. He looks out of his yeah. depth because. He was at Southampton, which was a pretty decent club for him to start off with in England because Southampton's expectations are to push for Europa League. Everton, with the backing you've had from Mashiri, of course, you'd be looking to get bare minimum top six. And Koeman Agreed, just yeah. doesn't spot you into thinking, right, we can get a game from this. Because looking at the game against Brighton yesterday, were it not for some fairly decent saves from Brighton's keeper, Ryan, and, uh, sorry, not Nias, um, Garner Gay actually putting his shooting boots on, you should have hammered them 4-5-1 if, you know, things have gone your way. And you're looking at the result yesterday and you're thinking, OK, one all, admittedly, saved, spared your blushes with the last-minute penalty. You probably should have had another one for a push on Sigurdsson, I believe. Pull back. But, yeah, well, well yeah, well, pull back. But again, you know, decisions aren't going your way. And as a Palace fan, I know all that. I know that completely well because I've had it for the last seven weeks or so. But... With Everton, with the money you've spent to be in this position now where you're level on points with the likes of Brighton and, and teams in that aspect, you've got to question, is it the players or is it Koeman? And you can't just look at the players he's brought in and say, right, they're to blame because they haven't got used to the Everton way and the Everton system. But there's players that Everton have there that probably aren't to the standard the club expect and the fans expect as well, to be honest. 
Yeah, no, I, I totally agree with everything you've said there. And it, it's a case where our season could be over on Thursday. If we lose to Leon, we're effectively out of the Europa League. Our season effectively could be over in October. Like, what the fuck is that? If that's not failure, what is? Ah, uh, look, we sacked a manager after four games, so don't be surprised with the Premier League. The Premier League is ridiculously ruthless, and sometimes it's not even funny how ruthless it is, but with Koeman, the level of backing he received in the summer, you would be, you would be expecting to be above, uh, around where Newcastle and Southampton are now, it, just in the top ten, maybe a bit higher, of course, but to be in that position where you're not that far off the bottom three, you've got to be asking questions. And obviously, I know as an Everton fan, you are asking questions, but there can't be people satisfied with this at board level and uh, and the players can't be satisfied with this because their livelihoods are on the line. Of course. If well, they continue yeah. to as poorly as they have, you're in trouble. Yeah, well, if you look, if you look at it, they identified the fact that Lukaku was going to go last March. Everybody knew, any football, anyone who watched football knew Lukaku was going in the summer. Okay? So, one, identify... Yeah, that was the worst kept secret in football. You knew Lukaku was going to leave. Yeah, but Steve Walsh's job is to identify players to come in. Striker. Why was there no striker signed? They'll argue that Wayne Rooney's a striker, but he's a striker that comes deep looking for the ball to make things happen going forward. And... You know, Rooney's been receiving a lot of stick, yeah. but Rooney has no one to play it up top two. Rooney's been, he, he's, he's a top scorer, like, this season, and he's still receiving stick off, off people. And, uh, you know, it, it's a joke, because, you know, any football fan could see, why not play? It is, because... Well, why not play Rooney and Calvert-Lewin up top together and have Sigurdsson in the hole behind them? And then you have Sigurdsson playing in his natural position. You have Rooney playing yeah. in a better position. He's better in the box. He can finish chances that are given to him. But look at the players he's fallen out with. He's fallen out with Morales. He's fallen out with Barkley. He's fallen out with a few other players that he doesn't fancy. And he just freezes them out. He fell out with Nias. And now Nias came back to bite him in the ass because he's actually doing well. So he's effectively given the middle fingers and said, you know what, I'm going to prove you wrong, and now he has to play him, but yet again, he was on the bench yesterday, you know, and it's just like, he's trying to fit all these number 10s, all into the same position, just just to, you know, no, giving no shape to the team, but just trying to give everyone a game, that he brought in, which I think is stupid, you have a player there like Tom Davis, who comes in, and he's different to the players that he's bought, a good type of difference, so he can play in many different positions, and he plays the ball forward, not sideways, not backwards. He plays the ball forward, and he carries yeah, us mean, forward. It, it comes back to it comes back to signing the likes of Sigurdsson. Yes, he's a player that for Swansea was mercurial last season. But when you've got a number of number tens in the same position, like Rooney, like Sigurdsson, then you've got the likes of Davy Davies. You're just thinking, hang on a minute. Well, yeah, again, Davy Classen. But again, you're thinking, why has so much money been invested in one aspect of the midfield where you've just sold your top scorer and your your most potent threat up front and you've not tried to sign someone that can do the job, not exactly like Lukaku, but similar to Lukaku, or maybe even more prolific. And it's not as if Everton aren't an attractive prospect as a football club. You look at your history, you look at what you've achieved in the years that you've been a team very much up there. And... There's failings, I think, under the under Koeman that you're thinking, well, hang on, he's got all the backing he needs to bring in players that can push Everton foot higher up the table. Because under Martinez, and I'm sure you'll agree, Everton went stagnant very, very quickly. Yeah, but the thing was, Ma- been... Martinez was actually attracting bigger names than Koeman was when we weren't even have that much money. <laughs> players like Samuel Etu and stuff were signing for the club who never really we would have heard of that happening, you know. Yeah. Martinez brought in Lukaku as well. But Koeman has that cold kind of yeah. coldness about him that I don't think players want to play for him whereas Martinez had that kind of warmness to him that players would actually adopt because if you look at it Ross Barkley is not it's a bad player man, better man manager yeah but Ross Barkley is not a bad player if Chelsea are trying to sign him and they're the champions okay uh, and he can't get a game for Everton because Koeman doesn't fancy him so that has alarm bells ringing for me yeah well obviously we were talking a little bit at the start of the video the 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 absence of Seamus Coleman, his runs, him on the overlap, it's it's a big loss for Everton as well. And for Ireland as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean 
that was a that was a double blow for Everton and Ireland when Coleman got injured because Coleman yeah. is a massive part of Everton going forward. Obviously, as a defender, he's one of the best in the league. And uh, being Irish, that's a big boon for, for, for obviously yeah. the national side. But well, the thing is, he's not a great the problem defender. Problem Everton have. He's, he's, he does he's, his job. He's, he's solid not, enough as a defender. The thing about Coleman is, is that when he's when he's defending, he has this thing where if someone's at the back post, it's like he doesn't see them, and a lot of goals are conceded from that. But he makes up for it going forward, so he actually creates a lot more for us. But defensively, he's a bit iffy. But not a lot of people. Oh, well, Irish fans are Ward every week. Believe me, Coleman's a much better defender than no, Joe Ward. I'm not. Me. I'm not saying that, but <laughs> a lot of Irish fans are very blind to the fact. Uh, that I remember Coleman wasn't doing that well last season. All Irish fans, oh, he's brilliant. He should be signing for Man United, and he was playing very poor. It's just that he was getting on the score sheet every now and again, but defensively he was very poor. I just kind of want to make a point as a neutral watching kind of Everton teams from last year and obviously the year before. The one thing I personally would have associated with Everton would have been a compactness and a and a steel especially in the midfield and I think that obviously you touched on it a bit earlier but the partnership you have in the middle they just look like a trap door like they just look weak and they seem to be kind of you they know just what? seem to be if, every if you day. look at I mean what surprised me Phil is that when they signed Sigurdsson I was thinking okay they've signed Sigurdsson good signing obviously we all know how good he is as a player but yeah. they've just signed Rooney who plays as a 10 who played as a 10 for United predominantly most of the last three or four seasons because we all knew Rooney was going downhill massively True. after he turned 31-ish, roughly. He's Once he now, turned into the 30 mark, we all knew, as it happens with everyone. But I was thinking, they've signed Balassi from us, who is erratic at best and completely goes missing at worst. Yeah, And I'm saying that as really someone who idolised Balassi for what he for what he did for us. But you, know, you look at Arsenal selling Oxley chamberlain you're like, OK, fair enough. You know, he wanted to... But you're just thinking... But was it necessary to sell him to Liverpool? Do you know what I mean? Of all teams, yeah, yeah. If you're going to sell him. Yeah. Make sure you sell him to a team that's, that is not a direct rival. It's bad business to do that to selling well, one of your well, best players what, to well, a direct what rival. Did what Everton did. They've effectively taken it. Like they've taken 25 goals last year out of the team, and so they've cut their head off. Oh, they're trying to replace it with, with number tens, basically with shoulders. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, there was talk of Zaha going to Spurs in the summer. Now, obviously, you know my feelings on Spurs. I was like, please, God, no. It was bad enough he went to the Manx. But oh, yeah, we're, I just we're think if, we, if we sell Zaha, if we sell Zaha, I swear to God, I won't forgive Parrish. But with Everton, obviously, they have no excuse now with the backing they've got to be in the position they're in. Obviously, with clubs like yourself, Arsenal, naturally, you'd expect to be minimum top four. And even then, that's probably not good enough now because obviously you've won, what is it, three FA Cups? Yeah. yeah three. First get mad at top four and now we're out of it. It's like you don't know what you've got till it's gone. Like. Yeah, but is that not a fault for the board or manager? Well, board, manager, yeah. That, that, but that's effectively right because they should Oh, come in, listen to me. If any, Seven I, years ago, I nearly lost my football club, so don't worry about losing top four. Try going to administration and then you'll know about heartache, believe me. <laughs> I'm, ta- I'm talking about I'm talking about everything with, with uh, you were saying that you know they shouldn't be in the position they're in, but surely that's a that's a problem that the board and the manager um, should have identified early in the season. We all knew Lukaku was saying as we already touched on. We already knew that. We also knew that we needed a new left back or someone who's going to push Baines because as good as Baines is, he can't get past the halfway line anymore. And then um, yeah. Funes Mori is shit and injured for the season. So they should have had a replacement ready for him. So it makes no oh, sense. Funes Mori is just horrendous. Coleman got injured around the same time as Lukaku probably was gone. Yeah. They should have identified a right back to come in as well. They had the money there. They spent it all on number 10s, which was the most stupid thing I've ever seen. And probably the best sign that came out of it was uh, Nikola Vlasic. He was probably the best sign to come out. And I don't even know where he plays. One week yeah. he's in the wing, one week he's sent them in. But he said the tone yesterday, and he was the one who was trying to make things happen. He was willing challenges, he was going by people. He looks like he's going to be a very good player. And, you know, he kind of came out in on deadline day as the kind of final transfer. But uh, he looks like a very good player. And I, know, yeah. I feel I feel sorry for the likes of Davy Klassen, who can't, oh, get a, it, can't get a look in at the moment because... He does look a decent player. Who? Yeah, as you said, he can't get a look in. Davy Klassen, I mean, he does look like a tidy player. He's been involved in most of Everton's goals, though. 
when he's playing. Exactly, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Um, but he still gets stick saying, oh, this I fit. think the problem that Everton have had is that the players that have been brought in, I think, not just under Koeman, but Martinez as well, some of them, as I said, have been pretty good. Obviously, Lukaku was amazing for, for Everton and very much at times. Chelsea. Look, well, most, yeah, granted at times, you, you'd watch Everton more than me, but whenever I was watching Lukaku, he was a player that Everton could rely on when he felt like it. That's the problem with players like Lukaku, and obviously... That's what I meant when I said at times. Game, but... <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. But what I'm trying to say is is that Baines, as good as he's been for Everton in the... What, what's he been there now? Over 10 years now, roughly? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, around that. You know, if you're not signing someone who can push Baines even now, that's a well. Because Funes Mori, I mean, he, he makes some of Palace's left backs in the in the league look great. And we've got Jeffrey Schlupp and Van Aanholt, who are both pretty awful. He's a centre back. Van Aanholt though. gives me heart attack every time he goes forward. And Schlupp defending makes me nervous anyway. But with Everton to to bring it back, it's just like the like I said, the investment that Mashiri has given. And back in he's given, you'd, you'd have to question why you're in this position. Because that game yesterday against Brighton, in my head I thought, if Everton play well, which they did, that should be 3-4-1 minimum. Because yeah, Brighton are yeah. not really... They're decent at home, much as I hate to admit that. And believe me, I feel horrible admitting that. But Brighton are still very much new to the Premier League. They haven't got a lot of Premier League experience in that squad. The best they've got, I think, is Glenn Murray, who played for us and was out of the team more than he was in the team. And Bournemouth, where he couldn't get in the team. Yeah, but the thing that is, that doesn't make me think that. The thing is with them, um, the fact that Brighton are not a good team. Like they're not. You, you you should not be going to Brighton and be happy to like play for a draw. And the tactics he set up with, he's he set up for a draw. He was happy to get a fucking draw, at Brighton. And if that's not playing it safe, then I don't know what is no, because and that's, and that's, it was a must-win game. Not good enough, absolutely, Paul. That's not good enough at all. It was a must-win game. And he so didn't win it. The game? Um, yeah, yeah, you have to be beating teams like Brighton. And look, if he loses on on you Thursday, have to be, you have to, you have to. Be. Like I can, I can't say anything because we lost a lot for it, but still, you know, we. Watford, 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 and not a bad side though. Watford, and not a bad side. Um, and they've yeah, got, no. they've got a very good manager. I'm not saying Chris Hutton's a bad manager. That's not sad, like, I don't lost to Huddersfield. Believe me, trust me. You don't know pain until you've lost to Huddersfield, believe me, especially at 3-0. But listen, with with Everton yesterday, had the only thing that went against them was poor refereeing decisions because, let's face it, Michael Oliver is a majorly suspect referee, as well as Koeman doesn't look like he's inspiring those players to actually want to put the ball in the back of the net. Yeah, well, that's, that's, that's my point, is, is that if they, don't win, if they don't win against Leon on Thursday, he has to go. The season's over. Effectively, if we lose to Leon, yeah, listen, season's uh, uh, over. Paul, I totally agree. Listen, a, a, man, a manager is there to get his team to win games, and if he can't do that, you've got to change things up. And Kuman isn't delivering on what's arguably been one of Everton's most like spend crazy transfer windows in the in the summer just gone. I mean, the likes of Pickford and Keane, they'll last you a good, for, they'll last you a, a long time because they're much younger players, but. There are players in that team that you've brought in that should be by rights scoring and assisting like it's like it's nothing. I mean, obviously we can't compare Everton to Man City, but you look at Man City, they spent a hell of a lot and are score are smacking teams up for fun. And Everton, with the players they've brought in, the style of play they have got when they feel like it, they can do that. And against teams like Brighton, like Palace, Swansea, Watford, etc., you should be doing that. And obviously Koeman isn't the manager to inspire those players to those kind of performances, which means he's got to go if Results don't improve quickly. Yeah, I have to agree. Well, we suppose we leave that to the to the fans to um, uh, leave their comments and then let us know how they feel. I've obviously given my piece about it. I mean, I'm 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 a ground frustrated man. I'm gonna start going bald soon. So you know, join me, 